HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we caught up with the Hiller field hockey team and boys soccer team as they make the final push towards the playoffs. We have highlights of Hiller girls soccer taking on Norton and Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. The Hopkinton Fire Department hosted their annual open house this past Sunday. The event informed about fire safety and some of the many tasks of the hardworking men and women of the Hopkinton Fire Department. So we have a, a demonstration for kids here about um, when the smoke alarm sounds, when you're home, crawling out of bed, staying low under the smoke, crawling out and finding that meeting spot um, once you exit the home. We like to do public education. This year's theme is uh, knowing your escape plan and not every hero has a cape. So we want to have you come down here and look at public education and have your own plan and be your hero as a family. Perfect. Hopkinton School Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh stopped by the HCAM studios to give an important update regarding the school budget. As you may know, on Tuesday evening, September 24th, the school committee met with the select board in order to have preliminary budget discussions. At that meeting, an initial amount of 5.54% was mentioned for the school budget. Subsequent to that time, we received information from the town manager about how to go about our budget process. One of the things that the town manager and the select board would like for us to do is to be able to build a budget from the ground up. We talk about building a, a zero-based budget, and what we mean by that is that we really think about all of the things that we need, starting with sort of nothing and building um, something that will actually suit the needs of all of the students in all of our schools every day. The second thing that they would like us to do is to try to keep our budget growth to a 2.5% impact on new growth. The final thing that they would like us to do is to develop a budget that sustains our current level of services. Realistically, uh, what they're asking is that we don't include any new programs. Um, the school department has talked about this at length and we really feel like with the grant money that we take in, we are able to build new programs. We're doing that currently. We have STEAM programs, we have career vocational technical education programs, um, and that's just a, a small snippet of the kinds of things that we are building with grant funding. You can find the full update at our website, hcam.tv. The Hopkinton Fire Department was recently rewarded $548,000 from the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The grant will allow Hopkinton to hire four new firefighters. The grant is from the FEMA Staffing for Adequate Fire and Emergency Response Program. It's HCAM Connections Week. And our goal is to connect you to everything that we do. Here is HCAM Station Manager Jim Cousins to tell you more. Hello, Hopkinton. HCAM exists to connect you to our community. So, welcome to Connections Week, where we are focused on, well, connecting you to everything we do. Actually, we have so much to share, it's taking us two weeks to fit this week in. So, hang on. How do we plug you into Hopkinton? Of course, we have a television station powering two cable channels, a website, YouTube channel, 
Facebook page, Twitter feed, Instagram account, several newsletters, and a community photo sharing archive. What exactly are we using this multimedia empire for? To bring you everything Hopkington. You, our viewers, are why we're here, and we're grateful to other groups in town, local businesses who underwrite us, nonprofits who are members of our community groups program, and town government and schools who support our efforts. So check us out in any and every outlet we offer. During Connections Week, we're running many opportunities to win an awesome HCAM water bottle. So go ahead and share, subscribe, follow, like, and visit us. Welcome to HCAM. Coming up next, we caught up with the Hiller field hockey and boys soccer teams, and we have highlights from a great girls soccer game between the Hillers and Norton. Plus, Matt Clark has our HCAM insider. A whole lot more ahead. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Help your community to collect food for the project just because Hopkinton Food Pantry, the scouting for food drive. Place food items for donation in plastic bags near your mailbox by 10 a.m. on Saturday. Some items the food pantry is in most need of include gift cards, canned meats, gluten-free foods, baking items, paper and cleaning products, and toiletries. If you wish to donate but don't have enough time to shop, you can donate online. Thank you for helping our local residents in need. Welcome back to HCAM News. Despite losing a lot of talent off of last year's roster, Hiller Field Hockey has two more regular season games left and must win both to get a playoff spot. I recently caught up with the captains and coach to talk about their season. Hi, I'm Melissa McIntyre and I'm a senior and forward. I am Becky Abate. I am the head varsity field hockey coach. I'm Hannah Inelli, and I'm a senior defender. Hopkinton Hillers field hockey is right in the playoff hunt and currently has five wins, seven losses, and four ties on the season. They need to win their final two games to get into the postseason. We play Hollis in this Friday, and we play Ashland, Ashland on our senior night homecoming game on the 25th. Despite a season with many ups and downs, this year's group is having a good time. Our season's been pretty great this year. Um, we have a super close-knit team, and we're having a lot of fun on and off the field. Um, it's been really fun. We put in a lot of effort, and we've definitely seen some improvement. And we've had a pretty tough schedule, so we've faced like a lot of tough opponents, which has prepared us for our next two important games. Um, this has been a great season. It's my first first season coaching varsity. Uh, it was kind of a last minute move, but when I found out I got to be with these girls again, who I coached on JV, um, made me really excited and I have loved every moment of it. Hiller's first year head coach, Becky Abate, is enjoying working with this year's group. Um, Alyssa and Hannah have been amazing captains. Um, I think to come into this season being brand new with them, to have them, um, I feel like they've been supporting not only the players, but they've been supporting me and the whole program, and I am really going to miss them. Coach Abate 
looks forward to seeing what the talented younger players will accomplish in the future. We have so many seniors on this team that sometimes it feels like we're all seniors, but we have some really amazing juniors and we even have one sophomore who very excited to see what she'll do for us the next couple of years. Um, it's been a really good experience. I think we all get along very well and we all communicate openly. So I think it's just worked really well. McIntyre sends it over. There's Doyle. Out in front of the net, backhander, and that's in. That was Carolina Stella. Hiller Boys Soccer is also making the final push towards a playoff spot. They must get four points in their next four games to clinch a spot in the postseason. The captains and Coach Sawyer are feeling good about their chances. I'm Owen Cola, play outside back. I'm Tyler Zini, I'm also an outside back. I'm Tim Fargiano, and I'm a center mid. Nick Skiba, center back. Hopkinton Hillers boys soccer enter their final three games of the regular season with a record of seven wins, six losses, and two ties. This year's captains have enjoyed their season. Uh, we've had some ups and downs this year. We started the season off with a bad loss, but we bounced back pretty well. And for a majority of the season, we've been doing pretty good. Just a few tough opponents that are always at the top of the league. And with the young group of kids, we've really exceeded expectations, I think. Um, it's been absolutely awesome getting to work with these guys. Um, I think that this year we've had a really positive team spirit, and we've worked really hard together. I think that everyone's really just come together as a team to try to make the most of what we had. And I think that we're passing better this year than ever before on the team. I think that we've really got some good momentum going into the end of the season. At the beginning of the season, We've had a lot of young kids this year, so the chemistry wasn't that well at the beginning, but I think we've uh, got to get, uh, get to know each other a lot better, and I think that's helped us on and off the field. So you can see how that's turned out, and I think we're uh, hitting the peak of our play right now going into the last stretch and hopefully playoffs. I was pretty, uh, I was pretty nervous coming into the season. Um, a lot of young players I've never played with, and I don't think most of us have played with, but... Uh, I think we've come together pretty well. Um, we've uh, done a lot of good passing, beat some pretty good opponents, and uh, yeah, we got four games left. Head coach Garrett Sawyer is in his 16th season at the helm and is enjoying working with this year's group. Coach, uh, so we're getting towards the end of the season here and making that final push towards the playoffs. How has it been uh, coaching this team all year long? That's been a lot of fun. There's uh, a lot of guys on the team that really have a passion for soccer. They show up. Uh, every day and play really hard. We've got a great group of seniors and captains who want to um, maximize the potential of this team. So it's been a, a positive experience overall. And can you talk about some of the uh, newer guys who's contributed to this year's team? Yeah, we graduated a large group of seniors last year, 13, most of whom were starters. For So we have a lot of new players and a lot of new starters. Um, we have uh, a pretty large group of underclassmen, six sophomores and two freshmen who are getting a lot of playing time. Um, and contributing a lot to the team. But they've uh, kind of integrated into the team really quickly. Uh, the older guys respect them and support them. So uh, that's been a, a part of our success. And how's this year's group of captains been? Oh, they've been awesome. Uh, Owen, Tim, uh, Tyler, and uh, Nick, uh, they've been uh, committed to making this the best season possible from the beginning. They put a lot of time in in the off season, with summer league and fundraising and uh, They've carried that through with great leadership this fall. So um, a lot of credit goes to our captains for our success this year. All right. Can you talk about uh, where you are in the playoff push right now, what you got coming up? Yeah, our, our record is currently 500 with four games to go. So we need uh, two wins or um, a win and a couple of ties in our last four games. Uh, we've got some uh, good competition coming up as well. But I think that you know, as a team, we've really uh, progressed over the course of the season and we're uh, playing our best soccer at this time of the year, so I give us a pretty good chance. Hiller Girls Soccer is just two points away from clinching a playoff spot. This past week, they had a tough battle with Norton. Here's a look at what happened. This past Tuesday, Hiller Girls Soccer took on Norton. Just under four minutes left in the first half, and Ashley Butler scored on a beauty. Airs it out. In the air, is that in? Yes! 
It would remain one to nothing Hillers at the halftime break. The Hillers once again found the net just over six minutes into the second half. In front of Cessnick. Into the box. And there's a misfire by Allen. She gets a second attempt That's and it's it. in! Nice left footed strike. Margie Allen with the goal. 2-0 Hillers. The Hillers dominated possession in the second half and did not give Norton a whole lot of opportunities. Hopkinton took the game 2-0 and improved to six wins, four losses, and four ties on the season. Norton fell to 4-7 and 1. Hopkinton is just two points away from clinching a playoff spot. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Standing by to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark and I'm here to tell you what's happening this week on HCAM. On Monday, October 21st at 7pm, the Hopkinton Zoning Advisory Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 7.30pm on HCAM Ed, Superintendent Dr. Carol Cavanaugh talks with the new high school athletic director, Rich Cormier, on a new episode of Highlights from the Hill. On Tuesday, October 22nd at 6 p.m., the Hopkinton Select Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And at 7.30 p.m., the Conservation Commission meeting will air live on YouTube. On Wednesday, October 23rd at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers volleyball team takes on the Holliston Panthers live on HCAM Ed. And on Friday, October 25th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers volleyball team takes on the Ashland Clockers, live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the girls' soccer versus Ashland game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash newsletters, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. And don't forget to connect with us during HCAM's Connections Week. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark. Thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton Community Calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news.hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. And don't forget to check out our social media pages and website for many opportunities to win a cool HCAM water bottle. Take care, everyone. The Hopkinton Fire Department hosted their annual open house this past Sunday. The event informed about fire safety and some of the many tasks of the hardworking men and women of the Hopkinton Fire Department. So we have a, a demonstration for kids here about um, when the smoke alarm sounds, when you're home, crawling out of bed, staying low under the smoke, crawling out and finding that meeting spot um, once you exit the home. We've got a, our, our new ambulance, um, which we're uh, demonstrating all the new features as far as our ALS equipment, our stretcher, um, and uh, other devices that we have made available to us in the ambulance. Wow. 
Sure. Then we can do other things. We can breathe for them or give them medicine while this is working. Good job, you saved them. Uh, we do have some tech rescue team members here which are demonstrating some of their equipment with uh, ropes and um, stokes baskets and such. We're starting our open house here. Uh, why, why do we have an open house today? We like to do public education. This year's theme is uh, knowing your escape plan. And not every hero has a cape. So we want to have you come down here and look at public education and have your own plan and be your hero as a family. Perfect. Try to aim for the fire. Try the fire out. Oh yeah, very good. Thank you. Uh, the recognition. Uh, the select board and fire department will recognize Remy Van Dusen, a recipient of the Young Hero Award. This award recognizes a child, family, or group of children who respond appropriately in an emergency by demonstrating key fire and life safety behaviors learned from a safe program. Chief Slamming, would you like to take the stand? We open the door. Chairman Tedstone, thank you very much. Uh, Board of Selectmen, Mr. Kamalo, Elaine, thank you very much for having us tonight. Um, if I could have the honor, I'd like to uh, get a little bit of a team effort in this whole thing, so I'd like to position some people up here for the celebration, if that's okay. I'd love to see it. All right, so I'm gonna, <laughs> Ask uh, my first responders to work over this way. Uh, same police, fire, first responders, I want to get you right up to this area if I could. So, you know why I'm so lucky to be fire chief? Because we can save lives. That's a good one, huh? Yeah. That's a good one, yeah. And I get to celebrate what somebody else does. So, Chief of Hopkinson is really nice. You know why else I'm lucky to be fire chief? Because I'm going to watch the smile and pride on your dad's face and your mom's face and your sister when we present you with this Young Hero Award, all right? And the last reason is I like looking at our audience. We've got the fire marshal here, a state representative, all your school teachers and principals and educators that are here to celebrate. The community is watching on TV, so this is a big event. That's why I like it, all right? So to get us started, I want to have our safe coordinator, Tim Healy, just tell us a little bit of a story, and then we'll get into your award, okay? Yeah, so Van Dusen was stung by a bee. Um, he went into his house not feeling well, um, and he collapsed. And he had uh, said, I'm really in trouble. And Remy had the courage and the education from the first responders and the educators to call 911 and guide the first responders to, uh, to his house. Um, anaphylaxis is a very serious um, emergency. As I read the medical report, uh, when they got there, his vital signs were critical. And uh, if it weren't for the courage and the quick action of Remy, uh, things could have been different, but today we're here. It's a team effort. This is a safe program that teachers and our staff work together. So I'm thanks to the school system for allowing us in. And, uh, and then we can celebrate you because you produce results. I want to bring the fire marshal up next to give you your first award, all right? Thank you, Chief. Uh, members of the board, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to be here with you. Uh, with uh, all these public safety personnel and the great job that you've done with the 
uh, partnership with the schools. Tonight we're really here to celebrate the great work that you do, Remy. And uh, I think it's, it's, it's remarkable um, because you have the presence of mind to react appropriately uh, when you're faced with an emergency. And a lot of people don't have that same presence of mind. So, in light of that, and what we've been able to do in Massachusetts is celebrate actions like yours with a Young Hero Award. And the chief and the board asked me to come by tonight and to celebrate with you and to provide you with this uh, Young Hero Award uh, presented to you. Uh, it's presented to you in recognition of your ability to react calmly during a medical emergency. You immediately called 911 after your father was stung by a bee and went unconscious. You provided the dispatcher with life-saving information and guided rescuers to your location. The outstanding bravery and quick thinking you exhibited has earned for you the everlasting gratitude of the citizens of Massachusetts. And as a state fire marshal and a member of this team, I'll extend that uh, uh, to be a member of this team, I want to extend our congratulations and a job well done. Congratulations. Thank you. Good right. job. Right. Now, this week, our theme across the nation <coughs> is not every hero wears a case. Plan your escape, right? And, and what we celebrate in part is the heroes and the heroic efforts of people. Uh, but we also encourage people to take this this week to make sure that your smoke alarms are working, to make sure that you have an escape path out of your home, just like you do at school, right? Uh, and to put more of the lessons that you've learned from these public safety personnel to work. And while I don't have a cape, there's only 371 other students in Massachusetts that have one of these shirts. A young hero shirt. And this is a gift to you as well. We hope that you wear it with pride because it really commemorates your actions and the recognition that very few people in Massachusetts have received. So it's not a cape, but for your heroics, I want to present to you with this shirt as well. A um, quick thinking, focused, and really just smart young man and that, that you will be able to do this and act as you did under these types of circumstances is quite remarkable. And what I particularly like about it is that I bet all of your friends know what happened, right? And I think that you are also a role model. So if anyone else in this community has a situation like that, hopefully not, but if they do, I know they will be looking to you and thinking of your experience and thinking, I can make those quick life-saving decisions too, and that will really make a tremendous difference in this community. So for so many reasons, I'm really